Well, you know, there were, there were a few things that um, made me think it was time to write this book. One was I was just coming off of my previous book, which was called Cinderella Ate My Daughter. And that was looking at the kind of pink and pretty, girly girl culture that was being marketed to little girls. Um, I started calling it the princess industrial complex that told little girls that how they looked was more important than who they were. And so thinking about that, it seemed kind of natural to kind of move forward to see what the implications of that were as girls got older, because I thought one of the things that was um, clear in that book was that little girls were playing at sexy or sassy, which is like sexy with training wheels, at an ever earlier age. And that when they did that, the risk was that when they didn't understand what they were doing, especially when they didn't understand what they were doing, there was a disconnect that happened between that performance of sexiness and true erotic feelings and a connection to that, and the fear was that that would become permanent. So it did seem kind of natural to keep on going. Um, I'm also the uh, mother of a middle school daughter, and I was hearing a lot of conversation from friends with older kids about the hookup culture and about sexting and about binge drinking and about easy access porn. And, you know, my response as a mother was to sort of go, I don't want to hear it because I really believe that parenting from ignorance and fear is a viable strategy. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and finally, we were having this umbrella conversation in the culture about consent, sexual consent, and sexual assault. And, you know, no question that is a super important conversation to be having. Absolutely essential that young people understand the rules for engagement, which they don't right now. Um, but that was where the conversation was ending. And I felt like if we really wanted our kids to engage responsibly, reciprocally, compassionately, ethically, kindly, all of those things, and enjoyably, that we had to start talking about what happened after yes. And intimate justice encourages us to ask, who's entitled to engage in a behavior? Who is entitled to enjoy it? Who is, uh, how does each partner define good enough? Who's the primary beneficiary? All of these questions. And honestly, I think those are really tricky and traumatic questions for a lot of us as adult women. You know, those are not easy questions. But when we're talking about girls in their early sexual experiences, I just kept coming back to this idea that I didn't want those experiences to be something they had to get over. Which is pretty common for most of the women I know. Which is, right. Yeah. It's really common for early experiences mm -hmm. to be negative, mm -hmm. not necessarily assault, mm -hmm. but coercive yeah, or just absolutely. unhappy. Absolutely. And I think that that you know, as adult women, when we talk to our daughters or when we think about our daughters, all of a sudden, all of that comes back right. for us. Mm -hmm. And we are, you know, we our fears for our daughters. We don't want our daughters hurt. We don't want our daughters harmed. We don't want our daughters to have to go through what we know they may have, you know, what we think they may have to go through, right. um, because they haven't, you know. And and they're they're so strong and so happy and so whole, and it's really painful. Yeah. And so I think that though that trying to find ways to talk about this is a way to help support them through this, as opposed to not talking about it, which is only consigning them to go through the exact same thing. So it's really, you know, it's another reason to confront ourselves and to find a way in to talking about our daughters in a way that has to include talking about pleasure and joy, or it's just too negative. <laughs>